Now on to Paul Coyer and Sheila Gilby explore the world of seeds. <laughs> At first glance, a garden seems a quiet and peaceful place. But if you look a little closer, you find some very strange things going on. And if you speed things up, you start to see some of the mysteries of the world of plants. world and it's a world to explore for yourself outdoors or indoors hello hello for the next few weeks we're going to be looking at gardens and the plants that grow in them and once you start looking at plants you begin to realize how important they are the food we eat this wooden table even a zigzag t-shirt. One way or another, they all come from plants. So where do we start? Well, the first thing to look at is where many plants come from. Seeds. All of these are seeds. And if the conditions were right, every one of these would grow into a plant. This could become a coconut palm. This could become a sunflower. And this seed here could grow into a tree 30 meters high. Now what actually is a seed? Well look a bit closer at this one. It's a peanut of course and the first strange thing is that a peanut is a seed. You know what peanuts are like? If I break it up a little bit here we can see inside it and from the top comes the outer layer, this brown coat. And then underneath that this breaks into two little bits, two separate halves. And you can see here, this is the bit that gets caught in your teeth. This tiny bit is the most important. It could have grown into a new plant. In fact, it's like a baby plant. It's called the embryo. At Wolffield School, they've been investigating seeds. This seed has been separated into its various parts. But what does a seed need to start growing? Here they're trying seeds out in different conditions. Will they grow in sawdust, for instance? Or sand? Do seeds need water to grow? If you add water to seeds, they start to swell up. Using a piece of string like this is one way of measuring seeds. But have you got any idea how much energy there is in a seed swelling up? Do you think a seed could crack open this plaster of Paris, for example? Let's have a look. No problem. 
But what about a wooden metal box? Can the seeds escape from this one? Yes, they can. Seeds swelling up with water have got amazing energy. All that energy is stored up in the seed somewhere. Now, which bits of the seed do you think? Let's have a look at our peanut again. Well, in fact, it's stored up in these big bits here. These are a supply of food, of energy, to start the baby plant off. If everything is right, and especially if there's water available, the seed will swell and the embryo will begin to grow. If all goes well, roots will begin to grow from the seed into the soil. Sometimes, if the seed is on the surface, it pushes itself up instead of pushing its roots down. All these films have been speeded up, so what would take hours in real life, we can see happening in seconds. planted in the soil and up come the seedlings pushing their way up to the surface again there's a tremendous amount of energy involved this is a heavy sheet of glass with a kilogram weight on it Another look at that. These are seeds you've probably seen before. They're runner bean seeds. They're very good to grow for yourself and we've got some growing in the studio. Some of these have been going longer than others. You can see that the outer coat on this one here has split and here are the food stores providing the energy for the roots to go down and the shoots to go up. All with the help of the vital ingredient, water. This is how a bean plant might grow out of doors. Here's the seed. The rain comes and the seed begins to swell up. The coating cracks and the roots and shoots develop from the embryo. The seed has begun its growth into a new plant. But notice in this plant, the food stores are nearly all used up. So where's it going to get its energy from now? How's it going to survive? Well, that's a problem that we'll investigate next week. Now, there's all sorts of things you can do with seeds. How about using them in a collage? Last summer, there was a national collage competition, and these are some of the winners.
a lot of different gardens there. But where and when would you find the first gardens? Well, it all depends what we mean by a garden. In earliest times, people lived by hunting or gathering plants that grew naturally in the wild. Later, they started planting and growing food themselves, but you couldn't really call that gardening. A garden isn't just a place for growing food. It's also a place of pleasure, a nice place to be. And the first people who really enjoyed gardens were the Egyptians. If you were a rich Egyptian about three and a half thousand years ago, you would certainly have had a garden. There would be trees to shade you from the hot sun, fruit to eat, a cool and beautiful place to be. And most important of all, there would be water. Your slaves would have to work hard watering the plants, either carrying the water in skins or getting it straight from the river using a bucket on a special pole. It's called a shadoof. Here you can see a plan of an Egyptian garden. On the right is the river, then shady trees round the edge of the garden. And in the middle, palms with dates growing on them and vines with juicy grapes. And there are ponds with birds and fish. A very cool and pleasant place the Egyptian garden must have been. In fact, gardens were so pleasant that people from hot countries like Egypt thought that a garden was the best place anyone could imagine. Paradise. Our word paradise comes from an old word meaning a garden. And it's in a garden that one of the oldest stories in the world is set. The story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Bible tells the story of how God created a wonderful garden cool and green and delightful. And he created Adam, the first man to live in the garden and enjoy it. He would have all the food he ever needed and he would never have to worry about a thing. God created the animals too and they lived peacefully in the garden with Adam. Most importantly, there was human company for Adam. God created Eve, the first woman. There was only one rule that God made. Adam and Eve must never eat the fruit of one particular tree. It was called the tree of knowledge and its fruit was forbidden. Now there was one creature in the garden that was craftier than all the others. It was the serpent. One day the serpent asked Eve why she didn't eat any fruit from the tree of knowledge. She said that God had forbidden it and that they would die if they did eat the fruit. The serpent told her not to worry. Try the fruit, he said. You won't die. So she tried it. And it tasted good. And she didn't die. Not then, anyway. So she went to tell Adam what had happened. He tried the fruit too. Then a strange thing happened. Because they'd eaten fruit from the tree of knowledge, for the first time they started to think and worry about things. And when God came into the garden, they hid from him. He asked why, and they said they were ashamed of having no clothes. And so God knew that they had eaten the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and he was angry. First, he punished the serpent, which forevermore would have to creep on the ground, not run like the other animals. And the punishment for Adam and Eve was to banish them, to send them out from the Garden of Eden out of paradise. Instead of having everything they needed, they would have to struggle to grow food for themselves and learn to live with pain and difficulties. And instead of living forever, one day they would die. Poor Adam and Eve. But for most people, a garden is a source of happiness. So why not make one of your own? This is one way. A model garden can have anything you like in it. A shed, perhaps, and even a washing line.
But what if you wanted to make a garden out of doors? Wouldn't you need a lot of land? Not really. At Lansdowne School, they turned a courtyard like this into this. In any garden, you've got to have soil to grow your plants in. You can use bags of earth like this or use bricks to build up a big flower bed like this. Or one of the best ways is to make window boxes. You can make your own out of wood or you can buy them made of plastic. The first thing to do is drill holes in the bottom so the water can drain out and stop the soil getting soggy. To stop the holes getting blocked up when you put the soil in, you need bits of broken pottery or stone. They're called crocks. Now you can add the soil. Dig a hole for your plant to go in. Then very carefully take the plant out of its container. Make sure the roots are free, then put your plant in. Gently press the earth down to hold it firmly in place. Give everything a good helping of water, and then your window box is ready to join the display. We saw earlier how seeds can grow into plants, but very few seeds make it. Some of them get eaten. So we've got one final suggestion this week for something to do in the garden. Have a picnic. But a special picnic. This programme is mainly about seeds. And this picnic is all food from the seeds of plants. You've already seen the peanuts. Very nice too. Now how about some cold baked beans or some lentils? or peas, or rice. And some bread. This is made from the seed of wheat. Or you might fancy a bit of chocolate. It's made from seeds too. And these seeds give us the drink we're going to wash it all down with. Coffee beans are seeds. Investigating plants can be quite fun, actually. Mm. See you next week. Cheers. <laughs>